Elitism. Since broadcaster James O'Brien made the connection of the abusive boarding school experience to Britain's attitude and culture, I've been fascinated with the topic. With my background in education and sociology, this is like a kid in a candy store having the opportunity to, in some way, evaluate the treatment of Meghan and Harry, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, by the UK media, their institutions, and public discourse through these lens. I recently listened to The New Statesman, podcast in which the subject was Boarding School Boys Rule Britain at What Cost? The two guests were Andrew Motion and Richard Beard. Both have written articles for The New Statesman. So today, I wanted to explore the deep-seated impact of elite boarding schools on British society and the ongoing treatment of Prince Harry and Meghan. The narrative of these journey is intertwined with issues of systemic elitism, racism, and misogyny, which is perpetrated by those in power. By examining the traumatic experiences of students in these institutions, we can better understand how these influences and how they shape the behavior and culture within the UK. Individuals who attended these elite boarded schools are shaped by these institutions. These students leave those institutions with the learned behavior and eventually become leaders in politics, media, business, and other influential sectors. For centuries, private boarding school in the UK have been seen as the gateway to opportunity and power. These institutions are known for their strict, often abusive environments that profoundly affect the children who attend them. Charles Spencer, the ninth Earl Spencer, detailed in his memoir the emotional and physical abuse he endured at his elite prep boarding school. His recounting includes vivid descriptions of being beaten and humiliated by both staff and older students. He describes a culture where brutality was normalized and emotional vulnerability was seen as weakness. James O'Brien, a well-known broadcaster, has spoken about the abuse he witnessed and suffered at Ampleforth College. He describes how mock executions beatings and psychological torture were part of the daily routine. These experiences left deep emotional scars and a lasting impact on his mental health. The experiences of these boarding schools often involve severe emotional and physical abuse leading to long-term trauma. Andrew, one of the speakers in the podcast, described his drive to the boarding school as a journey filled with dread. Upon arrival, he felt abandoned and isolated. He vividly remembers seeing his mother in tears, unable to cope with leaving her child in such an environment. This emotional abandonment set the stage for a lifetime of suppressed emotions and a need to appear strong and unaffected. Richard, another person on the podcast, described the lasting impact of being told to to suppress emotions and desires. He highlighted how students were conditioned to doubt their feelings and wants, leading to emotional detachment and a lack of trust in their own instincts. This conditioning often results in adults who avoid confrontation and struggle with making firm decisions. Despite representing less than 1% of the population, boarding school alumni disproportionately 
occupy top positions in politics, judiciary, media, and business. The system rewards these who conform to the norms, reinforcing elitist attitudes and behavior. The pathway from prep school to Oxbridge and then into influential positions is clear and well-trotted. This concentration of power among individuals shaped by similar traumatic experiences perpetuates a lack of empathy and understanding in leadership roles. The normalization of abusive behavior in boarding schools extend into broader society, influencing public discourse and behavior. The culture of abuse and emotional suppression becomes normalized, leading to a society where callous and often cruel behavior is accepted or overlooked. This normalization is evident in the way public figures and leaders, many of whom are products of these schools, behave and make decisions. The media dominated by those from elite backgrounds often perpetuates these same norms. The intrusive and malicious coverage of Harry and Meghan is a prime example of this. The hateful and racist remarks such as Jeremy Clarkson's vile comments about Meghan reflects the ingrained prejudices within these circles. The treatment of Meghan Markle in particular highlights the persistent racism and misogyny in British society. Clarkson's statement about dreaming of having Megan stripped and paraded through the streets while people throw excrement at her is a horrifying example of the deep-seated hatred and prejudice that still exist. Such comments are not only racist and misogynistic, but also deeply dehumanizing. And it was accepted within the broader society. There were no real consequences to what he wrote. There was no real apology. But one should question, why was it published in the first place? The relentless negative media coverage of Megan, filled with racial undertones and misogynistic overtones, underscores the media's role in perpetuating these harmful attitudes. The press obsession with scrutinizing and criticizing every aspect of her life reveals a systemic issue that goes beyond individual biases. Those in power, many of whom have attended elite boarding schools, have a responsibility to challenge these harmful narratives. Public figures and leaders must use their influence to promote ethical journalism and challenge racist and misogynistic narratives. However, their own conditioning often prevents them from doing so effectively. The culture of emotional suppression and avoidance learned in boarding schools continue to shape their responses and behavior. From a very young age, students are taught to suppress their emotions and desires, leading to a culture of emotional detachment, stoicism, and a reluctance to confront issues directly. This conditioning often results in adults who are avoidant, devious, and struggle with making firm decisions. The trauma experienced by students often spans generations, as parents who attended these schools pass on similar expectations and behaviors to their children. 
This perpetuates a cycle of abuse and emotional suppression. The entrenched nature of these institutions and the rewards they offer discourage any meaningful change. The system continues to produce leaders who are detached from the broader society, fostering a lack of empathy and understanding towards those outside of their elite circles. The same elite circles that dominate British society are often the ones perpetuating these prejudices. Their experiences in boarding schools, which promote exclusivity and superiority, contribute to their discriminatory attitudes and behavior. The ongoing treatment of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is a microcosm of broader issues within British society, rooted in the elitist and abusive culture of its boarding schools. The trauma experienced by those who attended these institutions shapes their behavior and attitudes, influencing the country's leadership and cultural dynamics. To foster a more empathetic and inclusive society, it is crucial to address these systemic issues, promote accountability in media, and challenge the elitist structures that perpetuate discrimination and abuse. As we continue to understand and critique the impact of these elite institutions on British society, it is vital to support those who, like Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, stand against such entrenched injustices. Their resilience in the face of relentless negativity serves as an inspiration and a call to action for a more just and compassionate world.